I'm considering this an add-on to what I discussed so far about the binding uh, uh, modes of antagonists and agonists to the receptors. And uh, this is primarily motivated by me hearing this a lot and I personally get confused by this statement also that a partial agonist acts like an antagonist in the presence of a full agonist. It's like a tongue twister and, and furthermore it's confusing because like you call it agonist improves activity and then all of a sudden you 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 turn your back and then you say it becomes an antagonist like what what what's what even happened so i think i want to clear that out by showing you graphs that i think would 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 try to flesh that concept out better so assume that we have here again a full agonist colored in yellow and a partial agonist colored in blue and let's say that they are both going to bind at the same receptor. So in a way, they should have the same active site. And since here, let's assume we have non-covalent interactions, which I'm just saying this because of the last video. But as you should know, uh, if I don't say any kind of interaction, it's always non-covalent. Meaning that a full agonist, if it binds here, it could dissociate later on and then giving room for the partial agonist to bind here and then it could go away later on as well. Based on our definitions of these agonists, again, a full agonist has the capability to improve the effect all the way to the maximum possible uh, effect. In this case, I'll just put that as 100%. Wherein a partial agonist does not have such capability, though it can still increase the original constitutive activity to a certain extent. For my purpose of discussion, let's just use 70 now, of course, there's no problem if I try to show you the graph if I have a full agonist alone or a, or a partial agonist alone because we already know this. Full agonists should be really taller in terms of their max effect versus partial agonists. But what happens if I combine them together? First, no, in, 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 in my attempt to try to show you that they converge uh, regardless of the order, I'll try to show you first what would happen or how would our graph look like if I add the full agonist first before I eventually add the partial one. For that purpose, notice that I have white broken lines here to depict what we would get if we followed the full agonist and then what we would get if we followed the partial agonist. So in this scenario, of course, if I add the full agonist first, I'm supposed to trace the full agonist plot right going all the way up here and then if if we were to follow this graph then we would have that smooth curve all the way down however all the way up i mean however if i add a partial agonist at this exact moment at this exact time of course knowing that the partial agonist effect is lower then you would expect a temporary drop however since we have here two molecules that can bind reversibly to the active site, remember that at one point, we will have a lot of the full agonists going against the partial agonists, and then you, we would see the activity would actually resume going upward. And then eventually, as we go towards infinity, we would go back to the 100% effect. Now, of course, this, isn't, this doesn't really count as a a legit plot because it's so funny like we, we don't see something like this and in fact i made this up so i may be inaccurate with this but if you think about it this part right here is the most unbelievable part because this doesn't make sense so how do we try to normalize that so maybe i could find i could try to find a middle ground between this extreme and this extreme and probably it's this so i could draw this and then that means that let me use a violin if I try to make a middle ground between the initial increase and then the drop and then the second increase, maybe the overall plot would look something like this. However, what if we went with the partial agonist first? Then, of course, we would get a different initial rise because instead of following the full agonist plot here, we would start with this partial agonist plot. And then the moment that, let's say, I add my full agonist at this very juncture, of course, we were supposed to expect a sudden rise in the activity to, 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 to follow some, some sort of demand by the full agonist, right? We, we want to get to 100 eventually, okay? 
and of course just like a while ago we we find some kind of discontinuation here because like we want we wanted all the way to go here but then because of our full agonist we escalated upward and this part doesn't make sense also and if we try to think about it maybe if i try to connect the ending part and the initial part and then i try to make a midway here it will give me some kind of graph that looks like this and you will notice that it's this one is actually quite similar to the graph up there that means that regardless of whether I put my full or partial first and assuming that they are both reversible binding drugs we would have a plot that eventually reaches 100% so like this however its curve is not overlapping with the curve of the full one right the full one is always here and then the combination is always shifted to the right and so if i'm going to draw that right here it would look something like this does this remind you of something or maybe if you want to convert this into a semi-log graph we get something like this so now what effect would that bring us so if i go down here plotting the emaxes and the kms or the kds so this is the emax of the full agonist this is one half of that, and then going down here, this is the KD of the uh, uh, full agonist. And then uh, if I use uh, the partial agonist, this is the max, and then this is the Emax of the partial agonist. This is one half of that, then plotting here, uh, not exactly perfect, but this is the KD of the partial agonist. Okay, And if I uh, uh, add both of them, uh, what would happen to this violet if I turn it into sigmoidal is something like this. And now it's much more evident that when I said a while ago, the full agonist graph shifts to the right. Here in the sigmoidal version or in the semi-log graph, it's really, 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 really like, it's, it's like copy-paste of this yellow thing right here and then I just dragged it all the way to the right. And so what happens to our Emacs in KD? So here, uh, our Emacs is still the same, right? Our Emacs. Is the same uh, that means the one half of emax is the same also as the yellow one however you can clearly see that the kd for the combination of the full and partial has moved way 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 to the right so if this is the, these were the original constants they moved all the way here so the kd moved up okay and what does this tell us does this remind you of something this should because emax the same kd or km increased is very much characteristic of what's this red one here of competitive inhibition so therefore it really makes sense that when we have a statement a partial agonist acts like an antagonist in the presence of a full agonist it makes sense because if i give a partial agonist alone we would be thankful thank goodness we have an agonist you don't give us the best but you still give us some increase but the moment that you have a partial agonist and then you combine it with a full agonist, it's like dragging the full agonist down. I mean, the full agonist is there. Why should we need a partial agonist in the first place? And by dragging it down, if you think about it, if I do have two molecules here, we call them agonists, right? Alone. But doesn't that mean that if you give two things binding to the same area, they would also sub have some kind of competition for this site? And therefore, that gives justice to the fact that we really see a competitive inhibition result here, thus giving justice to this statement. And let me state it once again, a partial agonist acts like an antagonist in the presence of a full agonist. And thus, in real life settings, if you already have a patient being given by a drug which is a known full agonist, it is not wise to give him or her a partial agonist unless you actually uh, intend to reduce the power of the original drug you're giving.